All right, good morning, Calvary. Hey, great timing, right? Glad you guys are here. Why don't you stand, wake up a little bit. We're going to sing the God would awaken us because sometimes we fall asleep in the morning, but also we fall asleep spiritually. That God will wake, awaken our hearts this morning to Him, to hear His word, hear His, His voice. So let's sing. You came and broke them down. You broke them down. There were chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You called me. You called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name, and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the darkness shaking. Feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to life. Oh, back to life. singing we're alive cause you're alive you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens awakens
Shake hands, people around you. Calvary! There we go. Oh, I thought I was just loud. It's the microphone. <laughs> like, that was louder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. My name is Murdoch. I will be doing the announcements here for you this morning. Um, as always, if you made a friend, go ahead and sit down with them. You can bring them to your seat. Or you can sit with them. Just uh, promise not to make too many jokes and talk during, during the service. All right. I'm here with the announcements, a couple of housekeeping rules. We have our family style seating in the back. So if you have a little one, it's just recommended that you sit there in either side on the back because it will give you easy access to get out the door should the little one get a little loud because we have our family room on my left, your right, back in the back, it's that window. There's a door there that you can go in. You can still see everything and hear everything, but we wouldn't hear your little one and it's just the gracious thing to do for those around you. Um, also in the back we have the restrooms if you need that at any time and also in the back is big beautiful doors that you can walk out should you have to leave during the service I would ask you not to leave out of that door 
or that door unless you have a disability and you need to because there's stairs in the back. Just because when you walk out there, it's very distracting. The door is loud and people will notice. Um, hopefully you grabbed one of these when you came in. Somebody passed you one, one of our lovely greeters, our welcome team. This is the bulletin. It has everything that you need for today and beyond. It has your sermon notes in there to follow along with pastor and also a bit of a calendar to follow along with, which I'm just going to highlight a couple things. Um, one of which there's a handy little sheet in there for the super plate party that's put on by CR every year. Yeah, so February 2nd, that'll be up in the youth room, and that is a party if there ever was one. So, you know what? Even if you don't like football, it still is a great thing to come to, and great people, great food, and just a great time. And last year I was there, the place got packed out, so come early if you're trying to get in there. But that was a great time. Also looking at uh, for next month, February, the month of love, right? Valentine's Day. So the Sweetheart's Dinner will be happening, and you can contact Sue Hamada, and um, that's February 8th from 5.30 to 8, and that'll be in the fireside room over in the buildings over there as well. And I wanted to re-highlight, even though I spent a lot of time on this last week, the Pray For Me ministry. Just There's a lot of kids in our church that are signed up saying, I want one of the adults to pray for me consistently during the year. So it's a campaign that we're signed up with that it's one year. You can get a book to help you along with the praying. Each page has a different prayer for it. But it's, we have kids saying, will somebody pray for me? So this is for us to step up to that call and that challenge. And you can sign up for that. I believe it will be in the gazebo, one of the gazebos closest um, over there after the church on the patio. Um, which also... On the patio, I know I said don't go that door during the service, but after the service, everybody go out through that door because we have all the ministries set up out there. So whether you're wanting to get involved, you're a young adult going, what's up with the young adults? You can come over and meet me at the Blong one, and we can talk about it. Same thing with youth and kids, CR, men's, women's, all kinds of stuff. So you can go there and learn how to get plugged in for yourself, or maybe you're looking at, I've been here for a while. I want to volunteer some of my time. You can go and talk to the leaders about how to do that as well. And the best for last. If you're a guest, we're so glad that you're here. And um, there's a welcome card in the seat pocket in front of you. He's holding one up right here. Yeah. It's just got a little bit of contact info. And if you fill that out, you can take the welcome card to the welcome gazebo. If you take it to the welcome gazebo, you'll meet some of the welcome team. And you'll get a welcome packet, which one of the things that's uh, new for this week is you get one of our new T-shirts. So it's a little bit of new mixed with a little bit of old. I wasn't just bringing up some groceries up here. But now they're red, right? So it's a different color but the same message because it's a new year, but we are still going to go and love God, love others, and change the world. So, but it's a new color, and I like this red color. It's a nice heathered out red. So we've got a couple shirts here. Who wants them? All right. I don't know if I can make the balcony. It might just end up in the back. Oh, right into nothing. All right, that side. Hey, there we go. I'm glad I didn't hit anybody in the head because I would have been talked to at the staff meeting. All right, if those who are taking the offering can come up and uh, take your place and in line with keeping with just welcoming you new guests. This is a time that we are just giving our money to be spent here in the community and around the world. We didn't invite you here to try and get the money off you. If you're a guest, this is just for our regular members. But if you like what we're doing here, then go ahead and join in with that. And God would just uh, take that and spread it and bless it. And it would be a blessing to you as well. You can just bow your heads and join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for fathering us, for just taking us out of the, the kingdom of darkness and into your kingdom of light, your kingdom of love. And I just pray that as we're here this morning, that you would just open up our, our eyes and our ears to hear you, that you would just increase our faith in your word, that just the love within this family, within the community, can increase as a result of our being here, that it would result in just real, tangible action and results in our lives and for the lives of those around us. I pray that just as we take this offering, that, that this bit of money that you would bless those who are giving, um, that you just, you know our needs and that you take care of us and we're trusting you with that. And it's an act of trust to, to give this money, but we also ask that you would just go and bless wherever this money is going, that 
whatever it's being spent on, that it would bring glory to you and that it would be an act of love uh, to those around us. We thank you and we praise you. And I pray this in your son's name. Amen. So we pray. 
pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your prayer in our lives. So we pour out our praise to you always. You give love. Standing. I'm going to tell you right now, today is going to be a little bit of a different day because today is our annual business meeting day. No applause for that one, right? Like, woo! Annual business meeting day. But hey, you know, in the past we've had annual business meetings where like nobody shows up. There's just a small group of people. So a few years ago we said, hey, let's do it on Sunday morning during the service. Let's talk about the business of God at Calvary Baptist Church. Is that all right with you guys today? All right. So this is going to be, this is going to be good. And, and I'm going to pray in a second. But I want to invite, where's Dan Broshak and Patricia McIntosh? You guys make your way on up here. You guys are over here. Come on up. I'm going to pray. And uh, we're going to get a little bit of information about our church. I'm going to talk about focusing our fitness. So a lot of stuff about the health of the church and those kinds of things. So uh, it's going to be a, a good service. So raise your hand and say, I am glad to be here today. Awesome. God, thank you so much that we get to gather together today and worship you. God, 
you are able, you are great, and we need you today to just uh, encourage us, challenge us, inspire us, speak to us, use your word, God, to, to uh, uh, move us to do your will, your way for 2020, and we just give this time to you in Jesus' powerful name, and all God's people said, amen. 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 All right, have a seat. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start by giving our church clerk, Patricia McIntosh, can we give her a hand? Here you go. She's got the new shirt on, and you need to know this about Patricia. Patricia really runs the church, so uh, if you have any questions, you can talk to her. But uh, we're so glad uh, for here to be here today to give us a, a report about uh, 2019 going into 2020. Call the meeting to order. Oh, okay, see, I told you she runs the church, okay? So we, this is our 2020 annual business meeting. I'm calling the meeting to order. Everybody ready for this? Yes. Say aye. aye. All right, here we go. Are you taking minutes? Yes. While you're, okay, wow, she's awesome. Okay, okay. multi, multitasking. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's on. You can hear me? <laughs> We're so organized here. This is awesome. See, Pastor really manages everything. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so here's our 2019 membership report. We began the year with 785 members. We had 26 added by baptism, 28 added by statement of faith, so that increased our number by 54. Yes. And then uh, we went through a little cleanup this year, so we had um, 28 members that we've lost contact with, one uh, moved to another church, and five moved out of the area, and we had five who went on to heaven. So that subtracted us by 39, and our 2019 ended up with an even 800. So we have 800, which is an increase of about 15. Okay. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So these are just some statistics. Well, numbers. Uh, the total number of families who joined, all inclusively, were 23 families. We had 335 guests last year. Which, and those are just the people who filled out a card, so I'm sure we had like more than that. Um, our salvations were 82, and that jumped by like 30 from the prior year, which is really great. And our number of baptisms were 24. All right. Okay, so that is our quick church clerk report. Would you have any questions about uh, kind of that stuff? You can talk to Patricia after the service. Dan Broshak is our treasurer, so uh, he's going to give us a kind of a financial update from 2019, 2020, going into 2020. All right, let me give you a few facts about the church, and then I'll give you some results for 2019, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what's going to happen in 2020. Uh, we're registered as a 501c3 nonprofit church. What does that mean? That means that we do not report to the IRS and we do not pay taxes. Uh, <laughs> Wait a second, is this live on Facebook? <laughs> okay. Uh, we are debt free. That means that we owe no institution or no person. We insure $17 million worth of property on this site. That's a lot of money. Okay. What drives our budget every year is our tithes and offerings. And I hope you guys know what tithes and offerings are, but when that bucket goes around, that's what you put in there, and that's what we runs this church. Um, we never know how much you're going to give each year. It's kind of a coin flip of what we're going to spend every year, right? So uh, in 2018, we, we increased our budget by 5%, and in 
and it ended up being $653,136 for the year. So 2019, we decided to increase it only 2.5%. So in 2019, our budget was $670,000, and we went over our 2018 budget and actuals by 10%. So it was a very good year for 2019. All right, I'll talk about 2020 in just a minute. I'll go down the expenses, at some of the expenses that we incurred during the year, and uh, we try to budget our money by those ties and offerings. We all know that our Christmas missions offering was $149,000. I don't know if you know, we, we have regular mission giving, and that ended up being $44,500, which supports 16 of our missionaries annually. So going down the, the expense items, our first major item is payroll. Our payroll, woohoo! Oh, <laughs> is this guy and his staff. And in 2019, we, we hired another staff, and he was up here giving our, yeah, it was Murdoch. Yeah. Our total payroll expenses, including medical, ended up almost $400,000, which is about 55% of our expenses, which is our largest expense for the year. Next is our programs, which is all of our curriculum that, that, that the department spend patio stuff and all the events that go on, that was $51,700. We should be able to spend more money than that, but that's all the budget we can afford each year. Because what we want to do is we want to teach the younger people about Jesus and give, and give them an opportunity to do some of the events that go on around here. The next is utilities, which is $104,000. Well, that includes all of our utilities, which is um, lighting, electricity. We've been able to have a lot of cost savings that area over the last couple of years because of all the lighting we've been putting in, all the LED lights and everything that the, what we've been doing. So it's been bringing that cost down, which is a, a good savings. The next biggest item is our maintenance. Our maintenance expense was $108,500. What does that include? That includes our janitorial service, which is all the cleaning and carpeting of shampoos and bathrooms and stuff. And that was $64,200. Then we have always minor repairs going on all the time because this is an old campus with a lot of buildings that we need to maintain. Those minor repairs were $32,000. And then we have landscaping, who Good Soils does our landscaping, that was $10,000. Over, uh, over the year in 2019, we did do some improvements to the campus. Number one was we put in fiber optics all over the campus, which in increases our Wi-Fi. So when you guys are in the church here, flipping with your phones, you're getting good reception. <laughs> We need to cut that back a little bit uh, during this. During this day. No. The other thing is we increased our, we increased our security system by $4,700. Also, if you notice, we paved our parking lots, all of our parking lots. That was $41,700. And then just recently, the freezer in the kitchen broke and we had to pay $11,000 to fix that freezer. So sometimes we have expenses we're not prepared to do, but we got to pay them. After paying all the expenses in 2019, we did have a little bit of a surplus of $8,550, which, which the uh, Finance Committee wants to use that in 2020 for capital improvements. So in 2020, our budget will increase to 
$736,000 to cover all of our expenses in 2020. One of the two things we'd like to do in 2020 is refurbish the chapel, the little chapel all the way in the back. That means refurbish all the inside of it. And then possibly we get the funds to refurbish the inside here. <laughs> Fix these chairs you're sitting in <laughs> and do some modification. Um, that's about it. Uh, if, you have, if you want any details of all this, numbers, and I'm sure you don't, but if you do, I'll be standing over here to pass out any information you want. Awesome. All right, let's give Dan a hand. And let's have the ushers come back, take another offering, because, uh, yeah, so. Uh, hey, that's, that's cool, and, uh, you know, to understand uh, when we talk about uh, the, the health of the church and and, and thinking through um, uh, what we're doing and what we're about. I, I just want to uh, mention a couple things. Dan said, Dan used the word, if we get enough money to refurbish the sanctuary, we would like to do that. How many of you would like to do that? Okay, hey, let's do it, right? So let's take the if out of it, and let's just do it. Let's, uh, how about if we get some new chairs, we get some new carpet, we redo the stage, we get a big screen, and we invite the community to come in and, and find Jesus. Are we, are we good with that? Okay, so, so, so let's do that. So I wish I had a picture to show you right now what that's going to look like. I don't, but uh, in the coming weeks, we'll be talking about how that's going to work out for 2020. But we're already starting on the chapel, so the chapel is going to be a whole other venue for for some really special things. I, I want to tell you another thing. This morning, and this is something we've been working on, this morning um, Pat Rodriguez came to me and said, we're ready to go on the Good News Club at Baxter Elementary. Okay, some of you are not clapping because you have no idea what that means. That means that the elementary school over in this uh, area right over here has made it okay for us to bring a team in once a week and teach the kids about Jesus. Are you okay with that? Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, man, we're excited about that. So, so when we think about 2020 and focusing in on some things, um, we still want to be, as Murdoch said, loving God, loving others, and changing the world. And let's talk about the business of the church as changing lives, right? That's what we want to see happen, right? So I loved it that we heard that 82 people that we um, re recorded this year, you know, the last year, 82 people found Jesus Christ as their Savior. Is it, are you guys okay with that? Yeah? How about like over 50 people joined this church, right, and are now new members of this church. We just had the second part of the 101 class. We were packed out today. Like we were just tons of people in there. We have new people that are getting saved, new people that are taking the step of baptism. We're reaching people for Christ, and, and, and we want to just be healthy and grow in, in that. And, and I, I would love to see us to get some new seats in here and then fill up those new seats, Amen. right? Right? How many, of you are, how many of you are sitting in a seat where you're a little shaky right now? You're like, oh, I hope this seat kind of you know, lasts through the service. I hope I can last through the service, those kinds of things. But, uh, man, so we got some, we got some plans, and, and we don't have it all together, but, but God's going to do some amazing things, just like he has been in the past and will in the future. So, hey, let's talk about uh, focusing your fitness, so we've talked about 2020 focus, and we've talked about your faith and your family. Now let's talk about your fitness. And when I say that, I know right away that some of you are, are like, oh no, like this is that time the pastor gets up and talks about getting into shape physically, like going on a diet and changing what I eat and forgetting the spam and, you know, uh, um, working out and all that thing. And you're like, oh man, not only is it a business meeting, but now we're going to talk about fatness. I mean fitness. Okay. So uh, um, and then some of you are like, oh, this is, this is awesome. Finally, that spam eating pastor is going to talk about how to get healthy for the 2020. Um, but I want you to look at your outline. Look at your outline. And on the top of that outline, right under focus your fitness is the verse 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. And this is what it says. It says, now may the God of peace make you holy in what? 
every way. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. That's a great verse. But it talks about God wants us to be holy, holy. Okay, I'm going to talk about that in a second. The, the next verse down, it says in Ephesians 4, 16, it says, God, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So, so this is what I'm kind of launching from this morning, is the idea that when we say focus on our fitness, I'm talking about your whole fitness. And, and, and what, what, when I th- think about that, I'm thinking about that verse that says our spirit soul and body, every part being holy and blameless before God, our whole life, okay? So I want you to think about with me for a second the idea as you picture you, you are like three parts, just the kind of basic parts. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I want you to think of those three parts, spirit, soul, body, now, of course, you have an uh, immaterial part, which is the spirit and soul of you. That's the part that we don't see, but we see the outside material part, the physical part, right? We see the body, but we have inside of that body, not just um, inside, like if you opened up the body, you could see all the organs, but deeper inside the body somehow is this thing of you called your spirit and soul, That's the core of you, okay? So when you think about who you really are. Now, your body is who we recognize when we see you. Your soul, we might not recognize until we get to know you, okay? So sometimes you might say, well, you don't really know me. And I'm like, yeah, you're right in front of me. That's you. And you're saying, no, you don't know the inner workings of me. That's your spirit soul part, okay? Now, again, I don't want to get too intricate with this, but God has made you that way, spirit, soul, and body. So there's more of you than we can see because it goes deep inside of you. Now, when when you think of the body, it's the physical part, And you think of the soul as the real you, kind of that inner you. But I want you to think of the spirit as that God connector piece. It's the the spirit of you was dead in sin. And if you don't have Christ in your life, you are spiritually dead. But when you have Christ in your life, you become alive in him. What becomes alive? Your spirit becomes alive. You have life in Christ. You're like energized by the Holy Spirit. You are given life by Christ. So not only did that happen, but this happens inside of you when you accept Christ into your life. Okay? So this is why this is, isn't just an event. It's a new life. Right? The old person is gone. The new person, the new life has begun. Right? So we're a new person inside. So that when we're talking about this fitness I don't want you to think of just the physical fitness because I'm going to get deeper into the whole of you becoming fit, all right? So with that in mind, I'm going to look at what I'm going to call today five targets of your whole fitness program. So so again, you might have been thinking, well, he's going to talk about physical fitness. I am in a minute, but that's not where we're going to start because that's not the most important part of you. But five targets for this, what I'm calling whole fitness program. And here's your challenge, and here's my challenge. I'm telling you to focus. It's much easier to focus on one thing than to try to focus on five things. But I'm going to give you five things, and hopefully you can take that and focus it in for one thing. And I'm going to get you there in a few minutes, okay? But here's the deal. If you decide today that you're going to become a little more fit or in shape, spiritually holy, holy. So your whole body, mind, spirit, everything, holy to God, separated to God. If you decide that, 2020 is going to be a different year for you. 
Or you can say, you know what, I'm just going to listen to what they say. I'm going to go home. I'm not doing anything with it. And I'm going to be the same person I was in 2019 all the way through 2020. And you're going to say something like, well, that's just the way God made me. We use that excuse so often. Like, we, we, we use that. We're like, well, that's just the way God made me. No, that's not the way God made you. That's the way you made me by the choices you're making. Now, God made you, yes, but he never wanted you to settle for your version, your version of you. He wants to make you into that whole new person. So today, we're going to look at this fitness program five targets, and I want you to think of it like this. We just, in the, in the 101 class, we talked about our strategy, and we talked about using the target, these concentric circles, and on the outsides, the, com- the community, and then the crowd, and then the congregation, and the, the committed, and the core. I want you to think of it this way. We're going to go from the inside out today with these five circles, and the, the first one is the most important. Number one, here's the first target. Focus your fitness by training your spirit. Focus your spirit by training your spirit. It says, spend your time and energy in training yourself for spiritual fitness. Now listen, how many of you love training? That's what I thought, okay? (laughs) Very few. Um, It's it's the same thing with discipline, so training. But here's the deal. We, We say this often. Your Christian life is way more about training than trying. That's why it's called discipleship. It's a discipline. So if you're trying to love someone, you're probably going to need to train yourself different in order to really love them, okay? So your Christian life is way more about training. That's why you call a disciple with discipline. It's more, way more about training than trying, okay? You might want to write that down. I need to train more, not try harder. Because if you train more, then you don't need to try as hard. It's kind of like that old saying, work, hard, work smarter, not harder, right? So training. So train your spirit. It says spend your time and energy in training yourself for spiritual fitness. Physical exercise has some value. We're going to get to that in a minute. But spiritual exercise is much more important for it promises a reward in both this life and the next. So the Christian life is, uh, the Christian faith, like anything else in your life, requires time and energy if you're going to grow in that. Anything that you see is valuable, you need to put time and energy into that. And it says that spiritual fitness is greater than your physical fitness. Now think about this. Now I I, I believe these two are connected. Like your, because God has made us a, a whole being, like when you, how you feel physically affects you spiritually. And how you feel spiritually affects you physically. Okay, why? Because it's tied together. It's radically connected. You can't separate that out. So, so, but this is saying start in the middle, the core, with your spiritual fitness. Now exercise yourself spiritually. Now what, what would that look like? And I was thinking about this. How do I, because it says spiritual exercise is much more important. What's spiritual exercise? Well, you showed up today. You got out of bed. You got dressed. You got here. You exercised, and you're now in fellowship and in church and you're exercising spiritually. You are feeding your spirit. Now, when you think about exercising, um, those of you that exercise and, you know, go work out, anybody go work out? Like you're, like, I mean, it's January. Anybody join a gym? Anybody, like, get rid of their gym membership and say, you know what, I'm done with them. Here's my, here's, here is my goal for 2020. No workouts, okay? So that's not really going to be a good thing for you physically um, and probably not spiritually either. But when you think about working out, when you go to work out, you're doing two things. You're working out and you're working on, okay? So, so when I think of spiritual exercise, my old professor, Dr. Eli Haru, used to say, work out what God's working in. So when I think of spiritual exercise, I think of it as, okay, it, I'm, I'm exercising myself, my spirit, not myself, but my spirit, um, and I'm going to work on some things, and I'm going to work out some things. So I'm going to work on my time in the Word. I'm going to work on my worship. I'm going to work on my witness to others. I'm going to work on 
like the, the weights in my life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on these things, right? But then I'm going to work out, and God's going to work on this. God's going to work out things that I need to get rid of. You, you have anything that you need to get rid of in your life, like that worries and, and, and hurts and wounds and these kinds of things? Like God's going to, not only are you working on good things, but God is working out things that you need to get rid of. And that's spiritual exercise. Now, your challenge is to figure out how am I going to do that for 2020? How am I going to just focus on spirit? How am I going to work on my spirit? Now, it says in Philippians chapter 2, and this is in the amplified version, it says continue to work out your salvation. It doesn't say continue to work for salvation. We don't work for salvation. We're saved by grace through faith, not by works, right? But it says work out your salvation. That is cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity with awe-inspired fear and trembling, using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work. That is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. So here's the challenge. You gotta take and say, okay, I wanna work out my spirit. I wanna work on my spirit. I'm gonna spirit I wanna be more spiritually fit. How are you gonna do that this year? In 2020, how are you gonna do that? So it might involve something like this. I'm going to daily read God's word so I can feed my spirit and get rid of my fear. I'm going to daily read God's word to build my faith and crush my fear. You're like, man, I'm going to write that down. That's a good goal. Do it. But maybe that's not the one for you. But but figure out what it is. But here's how it works. So the spirit inside, it's not just that. You got it. That that flow, everything flows out of that. Like the core of you, spirit in you, you build that spirit. And here's what happens. It begins to affect other areas. So we move from inside that core spirit part into number two, focus your fitness on training your brain. So we're not just talking about spiritual fitness, now we're talking about mental fitness and training your brain. This is taking the core, the spirit part, and letting it work into your brain, the thinking part. Now here's what I'm talking about, I'm gonna say, these next two pieces, two and three, are more about your soul, and that soul is the you that is your thoughts and your feelings. Okay, so spirit is that God connector, and then you have thoughts and feelings that are running through you. So um, focus your fitness by training your brain. Anybody ever realize that you need to think different, right? Man, I'm thinking this, and I should be thinking that. Why do I get so stuck on thinking about this when I should be thinking about that? Right, I wish my thought life was different. Why, how, why do I get so into thinking about this or that my thoughts turn into this? Why can't, so I need to train my brain or retrain my brain. I love uh, this uh, email I get. Uh, I think it's weekly or bi-weekly. But it's called Wisdom of the Rooms. And they always have like a, a saying and then um, a little kind of devotional that goes with it. But it's, uh, it's a kind of recovery devotional. And it's, this was one of them that says, when I'm alone and by myself, I'm outnumbered. Think about that. When I'm alone and by myself, I'm outnumbered. And the person said, I remember the first time I heard about the committee. Someone shared that uh, when she went to sleep, the committee in her head got together and started going over all the things that were wrong and why her life was never going to work out. They gathered evidence. They put a solid case together. Then they reached their decision. And when she woke up in the morning, they handed her the verdict, guilty and sentenced to a miserable life. Anybody have any connection with that kind of committee going on in your head? Like telling you what's not going to happen and how you're not going to be different and you're not whatever, you're never going to be enough. you got this committee. You might be your worst enemy, right? And it's the you. What's the you we're talking about? The thought life. You need to retrain or train your brain. So I'm going to have to train my brain. So Philippians 4.8 says this. 
fix your thoughts. Let's just stop there. But it's saying focus your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You've got to train your brain to focus on good and positive things. Romans 12, 2 says it this way, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You notice that? It doesn't say by changing the way you behave. Now, there's a part of that that's, you know, in there, but it starts with your thinking because your thought life turns into your action life, all right? So, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So, all I'm saying with this, I know I'm kind of flying through this today, But set a goal for 2020 to say, how am I going to train my brain to stay in positive mode instead of fear mode or resentment mode or disappointment mode, okay? How am I going to train my brain to do that? And then what's that going to lead into? Number three is focus your fitness by training your emotions. Now, again, I'm thinking of it this way. Spirit, I'm going to spiritually fit. And that's going to lead into brain, mental thoughts, and then kind of the core of me is how I feel, and we call that your emotions. So focus your fitness on training your emotions. Did you know the Bible's filled with emotion? Why? Because God made you emotional. God made you with emotions. It says in Proverbs 14.30, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer to the bones. Ephesians 4, 26, don't let sin, or don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. So listen to what um, Pete, Pete Scazzaro wrote a book several years ago called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. I highly recommend it. Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And he says it is not possible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. You need to think about that. It's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. So he said that one of his church members had said to him, hey, I was a Christian for 22 years, but instead of being a 22-year-old Christian, I was a one-year-old Christian 22 times. So I kept doing the same things over and over and over. I'm also reading a book called How to Lead in a World of Distractions, and the author there, Clay Scroggins, says, either you will learn how to handle your emotions or they will end up handling you. Most definitely, most of us definitely need some kind of training in emotional health. And it starts with recognizing that you have them. So my wife says to me, are you angry? Oh, no. I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I can't be angry. It says don't, don't sin by letting anger even show up in your life. And that's not what it says. But I can't be angry. Well, are you angry? Or how do you feel? I don't know. How are you doing? Fine. <laughs> right? Now, there's a cliche part of what we do, you know, when you're walking around here and you say, hey, how's it going? And you say, oh, it's awesome. You don't, we don't really have time every Sunday morning to go through the whole rigmarole of how you're doing spiritually, emotionally, physically, all that, right? So it's okay sometimes to say, I'm doing fine. But there's got to be a time where you're unpacking what's going on inside with someone out here. Why? Because you need to be emotionally healthy. Recognize that you have emotions. And, and when you, here's the good news, when you put God in the driver's seat, Listen to what happens in Galatians 5, and 23. The Holy Spirit, because you put God in the driver's seat and the Holy Spirit takes up residence in your heart, says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when you're in charge of you, it's the opposite. But when the Holy Spirit is put in charge of you, he begins to produce this kind of fruit in your life. And a lot of it has to do with your emotions. 
So here's the challenge again, emotional fitness. How are you going to work on your emotional fitness? You're probably going to need some outside help to go inside effectively. Someone said, your mind is like a bad neighborhood. Don't go in it alone. <clears throat> How about if you utilize, utilize your emotional dashboard to unpack what's going on inside? Okay? So if anger is showing up, figure out why. Like, go inside. And you might need help with that. There's a group for that on Friday night called Celebrate Recovery. And I know some of you are still thinking that Celebrate Recovery is for druggies and alcoholics. And it is. But they're not the only those people. Other people are dealing with anger and porn and gambling and overeating and depression and all kinds of things. Anxiety, all kinds of issues. That's what Celebrate Recovery is for. Get, in, get involved in that. So you might need some help with that. Now, so we're going spirit, spiritual fitness, brain, mental fitness, you know, the thoughts, and then um, emotional fitness. And then now let's talk about, because we're moving out to the body. Now here's where we go with the body fitness. Focus your fitness by training your body. I love a couple of verses in 3 John chapter, uh, chapter 2. There's only one chapter in 3 John. So that's why it says 3 John 2. It's the second verse in 3 John. Okay? It says, Dear friend, I'm praying that all is well with you and that your body is as healthy as I know your soul is. That's a great verse. Like that your body, so sometimes we think that taking care of our body is not spiritual, it's selfish. And it can be, but it doesn't need to be. <coughs> and, and God has created us together. So uh, we all know this. Um, when we think about our physical fitness, we talk a lot of, in church about soul fitness and spiritual fitness and that, but we forget sometimes that our body is radically connected to the rest of us. So we need to keep that physically fit. So if I was to say, well, how, how uh, physically fit are you? You might say, well, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And uh, I would say, well, how do you know that? So I, I was not doing well a couple weeks ago. I've been through, I've gone through some, you know, the sickness and all that stuff that everybody's kind of going through. And I was walking through that, and I, 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 finally my wife says, you need to go to the doctor. And I, the Holy Spirit works through my wife many times, you know, like that. And said, so you need to go to the doctor. So I'm like, I don't need to go to the doctor. He's just going to tell me that you're sick and you just need to rest or whatever, you know. So a couple days later, I was like, I need to go to the doctor. <laughs> and I went to my wife and I said, you know what? You were absolutely right. I didn't say that out loud, but I said, I'm going to the doctor. <clears throat> and I went, I went to the doctor. And you know what? When you go to the doctor, what do they check? They check, they check, they, they get on the scale. I'm like, I'm not here for the scale. No. I got something going on in here. Let's see how much that weighs, okay? No, jump on the scale. I'm like, you are 300 pounds. You know, whatever it is. I don't know. It's like, I'm not obese. I just need to get taller, okay? So uh, that's all. But it's like, get on the scale, and then they check the blood pressure and the temperature, right? Like every time. I'm like, that has nothing to do with it. And you're like, yes, it does. What are they looking for? They're looking for the evidence of what's going on. So when we think of physical fitness, we all know that that involves basically um, your diet, your exercise, and your sleep. So for 2020, look, I am not Julian Michaels. I'm not body shaming you. I actually use Jillian Michaels' 30-day shred every once in a while, and the only part I don't like about it is watching that video and trying to keep up with that workout, and I was thinking, it's just a lady. I mean, how hard can this be? And then I'm like, four minutes into it, I'm like crying, you know? And the worst part is when she says, come on, ladies! <laughs> yeah, talk about shaming. Okay, so anyway. I crushed that video into like a powder, okay? So uh, anyway, um, but I'm not, I'm not body shaming anyone. I'm just saying physically, what could you do in 2020? Because you know you need to be better at what you eat. 
how much you exercise and how much you sleep. You know it. So what are you going to do about it? What's your goal for that? Now, your goal might be say, hey, I'm going to lose some weight. Your goal might be say, I'm going, to, I'm going to start walking, or I'm going to eat less. Like, I'm going to eat less spam. I'm going to eat less dessert. I'm going to eat, I'm not going to eat late at night. Whatever that is for you, and I'm going to, I'm going to start tracking how I sleep, and I want to have good sleep. You know, good sleep is actually an, an incredible energizer for you. And sometimes we're not thinking about that. But there's, there's just things physically that are connected together. Now, when you feel good physically, like I said, it, it, it encourages you spiritually too. So it's all connected together. So when you think about focusing your fitness by training your body, I'm, I'm talking about that, but I also want to say one thing that um, we, and we think, about spiritual, think about spiritually this way, is that your body is the temple of God, right? So how are you taking care of that temple? So just like, just like we said, hey, wouldn't it be nice to have new seats and new carpet and refurbish? Like, picture God walking around in you going, hmm, let's see. Let's work on that. We could fix that. Let's update that. Let's upgrade that. And it's called being a disciple and learning to discipline your body. Now, here's the part that most of us don't like. It involves training and discipline. And so what are you doing? You are training your body to not be in charge of you. Now, we're not talking about building a body so that we can have everybody look at us and say, wow, you have a nice body. What we're talking about is training our body spiritually, physically, to let the body know it's not in charge. God is. Does that make sense? Like, but how many of you, like me, like I, do, I can do really good all the way through the day. I, you know, have a shake in the morning, you know, and I, I, I use Neolife stuff, supplements, and I, I just put the shake in there, and then I throw a couple of scoops of ice cream in it. And, uh, you know, <laughs> we have a nutritious shake in the morning, have a salad for lunch, maybe have some chicken for dinner and some vegetables, and doing great until about 8 o'clock that night. So I need some help with that. Anybody else need help with that? Good. We need to start a group for that, okay? So uh, let's, let's, Friday night, okay? Right? Okay. Um, but let's, 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 let's physically fit so that we're training our body that, hey, you're not in charge. God is. That's, that's, that's huge. So Paul said, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So what's your physical fitness goal? You think about physical body goal for 2020. But then last one. This is really important. Five is focus your fitness by training our togetherness. I know you don't think about this, and I'm going to talk in a couple weeks about focusing your friendships. But our togetherness is this. Make every effort to keep ourselves, keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. How much effort are you putting into us as a family? Now, I know you def definitely, we come to church for us, and a lot of times we don't think about us. We think about coming to the life group because I, wanna, I want to, instead of, God is going to use me with the us part of my life. And so uh, we want to be, we are radically connected. And God says he's making the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I want to be, in, I want to be involved in a healthy church. But you know, what the, you know what it takes for that? Healthy people within the healthy church. So we want to build healthy lives, holy, holy, healthy, so that God can use us to reach the community. Okay, so here's what we've done. From the core, out, all the way to the congregation so that we can go out and reach our community. We need to be healthy. Focus on our fitness spiritually. Spirit, soul, mind, so that we can effectively reach our community. It's about the purposes of God. This is not about you becoming the image of physical fitness. 
So let me put this all together. If you decide to focus in on one habit, it ca it's called a keystone habit, that will affect every other part of your life. And I'm going to say it this way, and I want you to write this down. One thing that impacts everything is your morning routine. One thing that impacts everything is your morning routine. Now, I want to challenge you this week to start each day by you can take this life group guide and you can go through it and read the passage, reflect on the passage, so you're thinking, and then you're going to write out answers, and then you're going to request, or we call that prayer time, and you can add a physical like exercise element to the prayer time if you want, but you're doing all these things in that morning routine, and then you add revealing what's going on in your life in a life group. That's the us part, okay? So it's so important that we don't just see our lives as individual, but connected with the body of Christ. So holy, holy, so that we can be wholly fit together by God. So here's how we're going to end this today, this part of it. Now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have uh, the band come up, and they're going to lead us through a song called Lord, I Need You. Now, how many of you know right now that you're going to need God? And it says, God says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work this out in you because I'm faithful. How many of you know that you need God to actually take the next steps and do the right things and be more healthy? How many of you know you need God? We're going to sing that song, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to come up here and, and pray with someone. Our response team is going to come up. You can pray and ask God to uh, really work in your life. If you're here today and you've never seen what happened on the cross, what Jesus did on the cross for you. He died for you, all of you. If you've never taken that step of faith to really say, Lord, I need you in my life, and I want to give my life to you. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. You're my Savior. I come to you today. Maybe that's today for you. You can come up and talk to one of our response team uh, partners. So I'm going to pray. They're going to start to play, and we're going to stand and come up. Let's respond. God, thank you for our time together. Bless the time of response, God, as we respond to you with our spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, why don't you, why don't you stand? Stand with me. And the response team will be up front. If you want to come up for prayer, we'd love to pray with you. Come on up.
We still have some people praying up here, and that's okay. Go ahead and have a seat. And um, we are going to move into kind of uh, 